So, thank you all for attending this afternoon. Welcome to the Silver Caboose Cultural Center. Uh, my name is Dr. Harrison Guthorn. For those of you who have not seen before, I see a couple of our happy frequent flyers. So I'm glad you all can join us again here today. So, for those of you who are new to the center, seeing as I see a couple of new pieces, just to tell you a little bit about the Silver Caboose Cultural Center. We are the education and cultural outreach wing of the Omani Embassy. The center was founded in 2005 and have been in this building since 2014. And the mission of the center is quite simple. Our mission is to reach out to the American public and educate them about Omani history and culture. We do that through a wide variety of different things, lectures, academic symposia, Arabic classes, academic conferences, museum exhibitions, children's activities, kind of everything that falls between. But if any of you have any questions about any of our other programming, please feel free to grab me or one of my other colleagues after the lecture and be more than happy to talk to you about any of that. But, Without further ado, it's my sincere pleasure to introduce Dr. Elizabeth Perry. Dr. Perry conducts research on visitor use of and community relations with parks and protected areas. She's especially interested in enhancing the relevance of a variety of parks to their local populations and furthering the science and theories related to these connections. Building on her extensive research and work history in U.S. state and national parks, she assists managers in examining how to proactively and collaboratively adapt these places to changing conditions. Dr. Perry is currently a postdoctoral research associate in the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Management at Clemson University, where she re researches and teaches about park social sciences. Dr. Perry was also the 2018 SQCC Research Fellow, and her and her co-investigator, Dr. Nathan Wiegner, much of today's presentation comes from that research, so we're all Excited to learn more about it. Thank you. Dr. Perry. Thank you, very soon. Um, so it's my pleasure today to share about a work that uh, my friend and colleague Nathan Rigner and I have done as part of our work on as the SQCC Cultural Fellow, Research Funder Fellows. Um, uh, this work is about park ecotourism in Oman. Um, so how many of you have been to Oman? Just to get an idea. Okay. Wonderful. So I assume something like that in this audience. So hopefully these pictures will bring you back to happy memories of your travels in Oman. And for those of you who haven't yet had the pleasure of visiting, I really do hope that this um, spurs some interest for you to be able to go there and engage with the parks. Just a little roadmap of where we're going in the next 40 or so minutes. Um, brief overview about tourism in Oman and park ecotourism in particular. A dive into Al Salil Nature Park, or ASNP, which is the park that we focused our study on. Some of the background about our scientific investigation um, and what we did to collect data. And then a presentation of our key findings and some meaning making about that data. Really, one of the wonderful things about the cultural outreach of SQCC and about this fellowship is how we can take projects that are in Oman and make them really relevant to Oman and then position Oman as part of a wider global landscape for some of these themes. So I really hope that one of the key takeaways here is how this project really contributes to Oman and Omani people and how it, it shows a bright light on Oman for the rest of the world in terms of their capabilities for ecotourism and where they have strengths and potentials to go next. So first, let's get a little cozy with a trip through Oman. For most of the people who visit, uh, the visitation is centered in the uh, upper region here. And most people tend to do a, a loop that takes about five to six to seven days, um, going either direction, but starting and ending in Muscat and going uh, through this loop, uh, stops along the way for appreciation of some natural and cultural features, getting that warm Omani welcome everywhere they go and engaging in uh, quite a few recreation activities. So somebody might start off in a musket, um, visit the beautiful Grand Mosque, go to Mutrasuk, go to the variety of museums around there, and then head over to the Al Dakhaliya area, maybe do some visits in Jebel Al Akhtar and Jebel Shams, big mountain ranges there that actually uh, that snow occasionally, beautiful rose gardens, uh, all sorts of opportunities for mountain views. The fort at Niswa is quite popular, especially with cultural reenactments in the area. And then potentially do a homestay in uh, Misfat al Abrain, where you can have the opportunity to experience Omani life, stay in a traditional Omani house, 
eat the traditional food and see how uh, agriculture is part of the way of life there, including uh, the systems of phylogeny. From there, heading into the desert area, maybe taking a stop at Ebra for the weekly market there. Uh, beautiful, huge melons in that market. I loved it. Uh, do some desert camping and activities out in the sands, watching the sunset, um, doing some uh, Bedouin-style um, activities. And then traveling up to Wadi Wadi Hali, which is a pretty um, beautiful place where there's rivers that go through the mountain, uh, developed for tourism. Uh, we see this, uh, there's a lot of people there uh, quite frequently, and it's a wonderful respite from the, the heat of the desert. Then heading, continuing over to the coast, uh, going to Sur, uh, enjoying the, the coastal city there, and then maybe in the evening going over to Ras al Jins and Ras al Had to see the turtles. Uh, Oman is home to many of the world species of ocean turtles, and they come to the Omani beaches for their egg laying. And so you can go at night with a guide from the area and see this in action. So there's a, a turtle laying her eggs right in the sand there. A wonderful experience, really um, uh, well managed with lots of opportunities to see these turtles. Up along the coastline, stopping at Wadi Tiwi or Wadi Sha for more of that Wadi experience. A uh, really great juxtaposition of lush green scenery and blue waters with the dramatic <coughs> sand landscapes. Uh, and then also enjoying Sinkhole Park, uh, which is, as its name sounds, uh, right on the coast there. And uh, you can walk into the Sinkhole. Uh, people do go uh, inside of it for swimming and to enjoy another uh, wonderful, unique Omani experience. And throughout all of this, Tourism experiences are tied to this unique interplay between geography and culture in Oman. They're not separable, right? So we have all of these wonderful landscapes, different peoples who live throughout these areas, and experiencing the geography, you are experiencing the culture, and vice versa. So along this loop, there's an opportunity to add more tourism. And one of these places in particular is Al Salil, and this Park is at the bottom part of the loop there. And so this would be in between those sand and desert experiences and going over to the coast, this unique place in between. It's really well positioned to be uh, a stop along this loop. So with this unique interplay between geography and culture, there's a diversity of opportunities. So whatever your interests are, you can find a tourism opportunity for that in Oman. Uh, really catering to those who like the culture and the opportunities of museums in the cities, to the uh, rough, uh, rougher trekking experiences out in the wild, uh, something in between. Also multiple group types uh, suitable for solo travelers or families, uh, really um, multiple age groups as well. We see a diversity of opportunities in Oman for that. And ecotourism. So ecotourism is really centering the environment in your travel experience. It's making some authentic connections with the ecology, with the geography, and with the peoples of the area. And within this, doing that type of ecotourism in parks. And we're well versed in what parks look like in the US, where we have um, uh, traditional opportunities for uh, ranger talks, and for camping, and for trail systems. And it's quite different in Oman, and I think that that highlights a real opportunity, one, to expand what we know about parks and about ecotourism in parks, and then also to engage in a, in a different and culturally appropriate type of activity. And all of this obviously has economic and social contributions. Uh, so economic, surely, from the tourism revenue dollars that come into Oman from these activities, and then also social contributions. So learning about each other, learning about different ways of life, um, an opportunity for local peoples to continue on their traditions because they know their value not only economically, but by tourists coming in and appreciating them as well. <coughs> the work with ecotourism uh, was really highlighted in Tanfid. And Tanfid stands for in Arabic, uh, this national program for enhancing economic diversification. It's a government priority in Oman to help bring more sectors into the economy beyond just uh, oil and petroleum to make uh, Oman more of a resilient um, and economically sound uh, economy. So uh, it really identifies responsibilities and resources and time frames, concrete manageable 
strategical plans for implementing initiatives that would drive this diversification. Systematic and data-driven, there's lots of ways that they uh, put in to check in on efforts that are incorporated in TANFEED. Namely, having objectives, indicators, and standards, objectives being these broad uh, statements about desired conditions, and indicators being those specific things that managers could do to work towards those objectives, and thresholds being the minimum acceptable conditions of those indicators. And then, of course, all sorts of ways for monitoring and evaluation and public updates along the way to make sure that this process is going as planned. It's broken down into sectors, initiatives, and projects, and each one of these uses specific plans to achieve economic growth in targeted sectors for the economy. Uh, also, we have, um, importantly, the authority specified who are responsible for implementation of each of those. So let's go through what this looks like for uh, park ecotourism. So uh, in, within time feed, the sector is tourism, and then the initiative within this, there are four within the tourism sector, is the nature and adventure. Uh, initiative, right? We also have culture and heritage, um, some business travel, and then more broadly, leisure, recreation, and accommodations. Within Nature and Adventure, there are five projects that are related. Uh, all different types of parks and tourism sites, uh, from caves to uh, man-made structures with the dam to Alcorn Park, which is in Muscat, and it gives that urban park experience right on the fringe there. A geopark, and then our focus, which is also Now, the tourism sector is a really high potential economic sector. Oman has been rated ninth of all of the countries for safety and security. It's a really safe place to travel, and we want to uh, welcome people to travel there just as much as the Omani people are welcoming once you uh, get there. Tourism accounts for 2% of the GDP, roughly, um, and about 4% of the visitors for all of the Gulf countries. So there's a lot of high potential here. It's also an opportunity for more workforce Omanization. So to have more Omanis involved in the tourism workforce uh, beyond uh, the guest workers and the expats who are living in the country. Uh, we can see that uh, right now there's um, not very many um, in terms of the rough total for Oman. And so this is a real opportunity to highlight wonderful careers in tourism, in ecotourism, and to have Omani people there. For the tourism sector, the main implementing agency is the Ministry of Tourism, or MOT. Of course, for park ecotourism, we have substantial collaborations with the Ministry of Environment and Climate Affairs, or MECA, and then all sorts of partners in the private sector. We can't do this alone. In the U.S. and Oman, having a government structure is the basic scaffolding but we need private uh, partners to be able to carry out important functions, reach multiple audiences, and uh, highlight areas for future growth. So let's look at two of those initiatives, the culture and heritage and the nature and adventure initiatives. So Oman is really unique within the GCC for its ecotourism eco potential. So many amazing natural and cultural wealths Indeed, many of the visitors to Oman are from the GCC. So uh, highlighting some of these places in Oman, these beautiful wadis, these dramatic mountainscapes, the wonderful coastline uh, that people from all over the world and more regionally come to visit. And parks are traditionally considered a value-added tourism component. It may not be the main reason that somebody comes to Oman, but it's certainly one of the things that they would fall in love with in Oman. And it's a common recreation setting worldwide. Maybe some of you have visited some of our parks in the U.S., from national parks to city parks. Uh, and really, uh, we use parks as a specific space to highlight and promote ecotourism and related activities. But how do we do this? Again, this gets back to the idea of partners, right? So in the U.S., we have ideas about concessionaires who help run, um, run parks along with the government. And it's the same thing in Oman. So they're looking to how they can do this through privatization. Now privatization is a really big, broad word, and in this context in particular, it means helping with park management through public and private partnerships with this goal of sustainable ecotourism. All right, so really focused. And there's a lot of opportunity for that. So let's visit Al Salil Nature Park, right? 
So here we have uh, some of the landscape that's available in the park, this intersection between the deserts and the coastal areas and where those meet. It was designated to protect the habitat and populations for Arabian gazelles, really important species. Um, it holds Oman's largest acacia woodlands, these beautiful trees, and it's an important ecozone between the North and South Sharkia. So where these two ecosystems come together, there's often at the edge of the ecosystems a wonderful mix of what's available in both and then species that are unique to that place in particular. So it's really a, an interesting place ecologically uh, and important for um, the, the, uh, the species that live there. We have fossils uh, from prehistoric times when it was uh, covered in ocean. So those of uh, you who are geology fans would certainly have an appreciation there. Some Bronze Age tombs, which I don't have a picture of, but I wanted to include this one because worldwide we have pictures of rangers pointing at things. And there are actually uh, whole social media campaigns of rangers pointing at things. And so here I am getting uh, an introduction to what those Bronze Age tombs look like uh, with one of the wonderful staff from Asalil. There's also a native plant nursery. And there are traditional and ongoing local values. So this park is not just a place that uh, is set aside for the gazelles only. Um, it is in terms of its management, but in terms of what it means for folks in the area, there are traditional uses for the, the plants in the area, and of course uh, the ones that are um, still outside of the park boundaries, um, where they bring their goats and their camels to graze uh, and part of their lifestyle. Uh, socially, uh, it was recently opened up for visitation, and by opened up, I mean um, in, a, in a limited sense. So it's open for schools and other organized groups to visit, and these trips need to be pre-planned with Nika either at the um, national office in Muscat or in some of those regional offices, and you have to be accompanied by rangers on these programs. So it's a way to test out having visitors in the park. Facilities include uh, gazelle breeding and care facilities, that wonderful native plant nursery, an office with natural artifacts from the area, primitive camping locations, and primitive in the recreation sense, which means uh, uh, undeveloped, so an opportunity to pitch your tent up or to spread your sleeping bag out under the stars to have that really primitive camping experience. A network of safari roads, and then a 10K trekking loop. Management conditions, uh, certainly uh, the management conditions are sound. It was, it was selected for uh, the Tanfi pilot program, which means that it has suitability in those, those management conditions that we look for for uh, a, a basic pilot project. There's been an ongoing relationship with the U.S., uh, past work looking at a uh, capacity study on ecological resources and the visitor use management needs assessment. So if the park were to be open to visitation further, what would that look like? What types of supports would need to be in place? Engaged and well-trained staff. It has a director, Magid al Karashi, uh, who was just wonderful in our time there, very knowledgeable about the ecology and tourism conditions. A cadre of local rangers who protect the wildlife, and a lot of assistance from the Musket office. Uh, so um, uh, obviously there's a small staff on the park site, but then uh, easily available assistance from national and regional levels. It's also in a blank spot in this tourism loop. Uh, so it could really be a value-added ecotourism com component to it, to really help deepen people's nature appreciation in Oman, to extend the community connections in the area so that people in that area feel valued on this tourism circuit. Uh, especially in the town of Akamil Wawafi, where most of the rangers who work in the park live. And an opportunity to incorporate the area into the regional tourism plan for um, Oman. One of the things that we did with the staff there um, was to develop an administrative history. So uh, we were hearing about all these different projects timelines going on and it really hadn't been distilled into one focus. So I'd like to just briefly present that to you to show how much good work has actually been uh, going on in Asalil and where there's opportunity to go further. So we have a lot of opportunity, a lot of activities from Mika. Can you show us a map where the park is? Um, 
I mean, it would be helpful just. Sure. I'm sorry. Our wonderful big table. 